I promised myself that I would not make another gown and here we are literally making another gown oh my god hey guys it's your design it's me welcome back to design is me daily where we design our own clothes we design our own business and we design our own lives and in today's video oh baby this is the start of the next couple of weeks where I promised myself I would never make another gown again and here we are literally making another gown. A client reached out to me on Instagram and he wanted a bridal dress made for his fiance and I decided you know what I never gave you guys a gown video before so I just figured I'll take this client and we are gonna film the entire process of what it really takes to make a gown. Her wedding is on December 26th. We have to have this dress ready for December 15th. So I literally just got off the phone with my client and we decided, okay, cool. We are going to get her measurements completed tomorrow. So the next time I see you guys, we are literally going to be measuring our client and then we're gonna take it from there. What you guys could expect over the next couple of weeks is, I don't know about y'all, but I cannot make custom piece without sketching the process first. We did come up with a brief concept of what the dress is going to be like, but she is um, giving me that much needed creative freedom to just kind of play around with my own vibe, which is dope. So when we are finished with her measurements, we're gonna jump straight into the sketching part of the process. And once we have the design sketched, and I know exactly what the dress is going to look like. Then we're gonna jump straight into pattern drafting. Okay, um, it is a sweet, it is a sweetheart cut dress. That's the vibe she wanted. So we may have to drape a bit of this design, but I mean, like I literally just said yes. So we have a couple of days until we um actually get into the meat. Of the process but this is just our little intro guys i may have to divide this process into two videos so there is gonna be like a part one and a part two so i guess this is part one um just from measurements to when we fit her prototype or her twelve dress and then we'll go into part two where we actually create the real um, design so part one is going to be pretty compressed like i i know i'll have to like I'll probably have to time lapse most of this video. Like, let's just be honest because ugh, your gowns take so freaking long. Y'all have no idea. I may have to time lapse a lot of this video, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I just, I just thought, listen, let me just pull out my camera, um, get a quick intro in for you guys so y'all know what to expect. And um, we want to get into some gown things. <sighs> Let's get into some gum things. <laughs> Always start your measurements by measuring across the shoulder first, then you measure down to the armhole, across the chest down to the apex over the empire and then down to the waist the empire circumference the waist circumference the bust circumference measure from the waist to the hips which is about nine inches and then the hip circumference measure from the waist to the knees and at this point we're gonna ask our client to put on her heels so that we can get the length of her train i'm just laying that tape onto her waist i'm gonna ask her to assist me by holding the the tape in place and i'm just draping the tape to the length that she prefers so right now she's telling me where she wants her train to stop We're gonna measure the front, the length of the front of the dress, because obviously we do not want her to trip on the length of her dress. And at this point, we are measuring the depth of the back of her dress. So she's just telling me where's a comfortable stop 
for her um the back of her dress to stop and that measures two inches above the waist we're measuring from the nape of the neck down to where she wants her sweetheart to begin the next circumference and this is just the measurement for the slit which is usually about 13 inches down but she was comfortable with 15. So like I mentioned before, I cannot do any custom design without sketching the process first. And sketching is really, really important just to understand and dissect the way the construction is going to be. So I really want you guys to get accustomed with sketching everything before you start. I'm making sure to outline that silhouette so we know it's a mermaid silhouette. I'm incorporating all the lines, all the seam lines that's going to be in this dress. And of course, I am laying down all of her measurements on the same page with her sketch. All the details that make up this dress, so like all the things that I'm going to need, the fabric of choice, boning, zipper, the length of the zipper, literally every single detail we are putting on this page. And immediately after, I began to pattern draft. You, are, you guys are going to see this sketch in almost every clip because I like to have the sketch on hand just so that I can make reference while I'm pattern drafting or while I'm draping or whatever. So that I never lose sight of what the design is supposed to be and where everything is supposed to line up. When you're pattern drafting any design, I really want you guys to remember that pattern drafting is very, very easy. Just remember that any garment is made up of a bunch of different shapes in order to get a certain look. So once you keep that in mind, every project would be easy. Also remember that no part on the body is a straight line. So dots and seam lines and you know different elements like that are used to give your dress shape so just make sure that you keep those measurements in mind make sure that everything continues to line up the way it's supposed to and just kind of use your common sense just based on the measurements as well as the shape of your client just always keep that in mind Make sure that every single panel, every single pattern piece lines up with the one next to it so that everything is nice and flush. So you guys would notice that I'm always lining up the pattern. So no matter what edits I'm doing to a particular pattern, I always take the pattern next to it and make sure that it lines up because even though it's a bunch of different pieces, these pieces do have to go together to form one dress so it's a tedious process but it's worth it Once I was finished drafting my skirt pattern, I went ahead and started draping the top of our dress. And because our dress does have a very uh, corset, uh, sweetheart sort of a silhouette at the top, I figured it was just easier to drape this part of the pattern and then transfer our drape to our pattern paper. Some designs are just easier to drape as opposed to drafting from scratch and I feel like as a designer you kind of have to know when to draft, when to drape, when to do both, when to just find that balance to make the project a lot more accurate and a lot easier. I'm just using some style tape to create that style line 
our sweetheart cut at the front and then our plunge at the back and the first thing I did was measured my entire dress form just to make sure that my clients measurements mirrored the measurements on the dress form so I did have to pad the top just a little bit to accommodate the size of her bust but once I was comfortable with the measurements I went ahead and started draping and you guys could see I'm taking that paper pattern and making sure that it lines up on my drape before transferring that drape to paper because like I mentioned before even though it's a lot of different pieces those pieces do have to go together to form one dress so take as much time as you need on this part of the process it is the most important part of the process all right because once you have a perfect pattern you could literally make anything so take your time do not rush the pattern process measure as many times as you need to i am just measuring the waist because obviously this is the top of the pattern but the hem of the top is where the waist is going to connect her waist measures 29 inches so it means this half of the pattern should measure 14 and a half inches which it did I went ahead and started constructing a sample of the top just to make sure that all those pieces lined up perfectly and I was happy with the way it looked and the way it fit. So before you start uh, making your toile, before you start constructing the prototype dress, you do want to do a sample of that top before actually getting into the prototype. Go ahead and insert your padding i did realize that on the top was kind of loose so that's when i made the decision to take off a little bit so i tapered from uh, the top i took off half inch from the top just about three eighths of an inch like about half inch to the top and then i tapered it down to one eighth of an inch and I did that to both patterns. So what that did was it made the top of the the bustier area of the top a little bit tighter and it fit the cup a little bit more snug. All right, so I went ahead and just trimmed off that on both sides. And I want you guys to remember that this is also part of the pattern drafting process, okay? Unless you do a sample and you confirm that what you drafted and what you draped is accurate, then your pattern is not accurate. You have to have to have to do a sample or a tester to make sure that that pattern is actually accurate. All right, once that is confirmed and you're cool with the way your pattern um was drafted then you could go right ahead and continue So at this point, I just started cutting out my pattern pieces out of our fabric. And this is where we actually begin constructing our twirl dress. Now remember guys, this dress is a three layer dress, which means there's a top layer, which is the layer that you guys uh, see. There's a middle layer that consists of all the boning, all the padding, all the drama. And then there's the lining layer that actually touches the skin that seals the entire dress and makes everything all seamless and neat. So everything that we're cutting here, all the pieces that make up one layer, we are cutting it three times. So we are construct, we, we're basically constructing three dresses and then we're going to put those three dresses together to make one dress. Now I like to begin constructing the middle layer first and that's just because that's where all the drama is. And you all already know if you guys have not seen my full leather corset tutorial already 
I could probably link that down below if you're interested in seeing it. But how we insert boning into any project is we just put the two pieces of fabric together, get those seams created, and then we put a top stitch along the both seams. We press those seams open, stitch them down to create almost like a tunnel on both sides. And then we measure off our boning and we slip the boning inside of each tunnel. Make sure to close off the ends of those tunnels half inch away from the end of the fabric or the hem of the fabric. All right, on the top and on the bottom, make sure to leave that half inch allowance, guys, because the worst thing is to stitch over your boning and then it's really really difficult to fold over your fabric once the top is constructed i'm obviously just going on to the skirt of this dress and this is why the pattern was so important because obviously your pattern is going to have all your notches and stuff like that and it just makes it that much easier to construct when you know exactly where to start and where to stop and you're not guessing. Once I was finished with that layer and everything was inserted, I went ahead and pressed my entire dress and just a word of advice guys you guys should actually be pressing throughout the process so when you stitch you press immediately press those seams open make sure everything is nice and neat nice and flat all right um even if you don't do it for the middle layer just because the middle layer is going to be concealed between the top layer and the lining layer make sure to press as you go along for the top layer as well as the lining layer most important so I'm just going ahead and pressing all three layers. I construct one layer at a time and then I press all of them. So this is what I am doing right now. I'm just inserting that padding guys into the middle layer. And of course I am hand stitching the padding in place. I did double the padding but of course you have to stitch one at a time so i'm just laying down the first pad and i am stitching that down with a needle and thread Once I was finished with my padding, I did go in with a second bra cup on top of the padding that we just put in and I'm also putting in some extra boning on a diagonal just to give it some more support and this type of boning that i'm using guys is the boning that's already encased in its own uh, tunnel and this is my favorite type of boning to use it just gives it that added support that is most necessary i'm just putting the two layers of fabric together now so our middle layer and our top layer We just put those together make sure that all of those seams line up and just make sure that the middle layer is exposed and the top layer the right sides is facing up we're gonna grab that lining layer and just lay that right sides facing right sides to secure all three layers together and we're just gonna grab some pins 
and secure all three layers together at the top if you guys did not double check the symmetry of your bra cups definitely uh, check it now because we are going to secure all three layers together at the top so once this stitch is done there's no going back so make sure that it is symmetric on both sides all right so you could have a nice even sweetheart i'm just trimming off the excess i'm obviously clipping my curved edge just so that when we flip that over it's nice and neat and i'm dropping a stay stitch on the lining to prevent the lining from rolling over okay and there you have it go ahead and give this dress a nice press and let me give you guys a quick up close of what that stay stitch looks like and why it was so important to do that stay stitch obviously the lining is not secured completely to the dress it's just secure secured at the top all right but that one eighth of an inch stay stitch does play a very very important role in just making sure that the, that the lining stays where it's supposed to stay i'm just going to turn over that dress and we are going to secure our slit and the way we close off this slit guys remember it is a three layer dress we are just putting those three layers together when i pressed my dress i went ahead and pressed all of the seams So the top layer and the middle layer is pressed half inch in in one direction and then the lining layer is pressed half inch in in the other direction just to make sure that the top and the inside is nice and seamless and neat. I'm just grabbing some pins and I'm pinning all three layers together and then I'm going to grab my needle and thread and do a nice clean blind stitch. To secure all three layers together but to make sure that it is it is not seen at all so no thread should be seen uh when stitching this these layers together I'm not sure if I have enough space in here 
for you guys to see a full look of her in the dress as well as the veil just because of how long the veil is but just kind of close your eyes and imagine <laughs> all right so let me just let me just set these things aside and then we're gonna jump right into fitting our lovely clients by the way my client's name is giselle the in part two instead of calling her my client i'll be referring to her as giselle all right so ah <sighs> y'all i'm excited so this is Giselle and Giselle has one of the most amazing shapes I have ever came across in my life. So we're just asking her to step into our dress and we did allow her to leave her bra on just until uh, the dress was completely over her boobs. And I did this specifically because the camera was rolling but this is also something that you guys can do just to make your client feel a little more comfortable. So when she was holding the dress comfortably over her bust area, I am just taking pins and I am basically securing her into the dress. I just asked her to hold the pins for me just to make it a little bit easier and more accessible. And at this point, I realized that it was time for me to get rid of these very, very long nails. So moving forward, we would either do something shorter or just get rid of these nails completely. Because, baby, the way this fabric is set up, we need all the strength that we could get. And these nails are not conducive for this type of job. At this point, this is when I realized that my camera had actually stopped rolling and we had already um, did most of the adjustments. However, I am going to just go back through all the adjustments that we made. Right now, I am just finding the perfect length and I am marking the length. She's wearing heels, of course. Always make sure that your client is wearing the same heels that you would have taken the measurements in. And all those tucks that you guys are seeing along the dress, that is obviously just uh, the adjustments that we would need to make. So that would have been like loose fabric that we just pulled in. And that would be adjustments that we would um, transfer to our pattern just to ensure that her actual dress fits perfect. I think one of her pins had popped at this point so we're just fixing that. And as you guys could tell, Giselle keeps pulling the bust area of her dress up and a little bit closer and that is because the top is a little bit loose. So we did go ahead and make the marking and the adjustment on the side right there. That little triangular dot that you are seeing on the corner there, we did go ahead and pin that and mark it. Alright, the reason why it's not pinned now is because we took the pin out just to avoid it sticking her but we did mark it. So just a side note this is when we started discussing how her hair was going to go to accommodate her veil and she did say she intended to keep her hair down so i asked her to put her hair down just so that we can get a vibe of how everything is going to look so i'm just rolling out a couple yards of that tall just so that we can test out the length of her veil. I quickly hand stitched the tool to that plastic comb and then we just did a quick tester. So now we're gonna place our veil 
into Giselle's hair and the first thing I asked her was if it was okay to touch her hair because I don't know about y'all but hair is a very very spiritual thing you don't just go around touching and putting your hand in people's hair it's always very very polite and respectful to let the bride know that okay I'm gonna touch her hair now or ask her permission before you insert anything into her hair so that's just another side note At this point, we were just kind of playing around with the veil, trying to figure out what length was best. Her hubby even got involved and we decided on the veil being 100 inches in length. It is going to be a three layer veil. So the longest length is going to be 100 inches. The mid length is going to be 30 inches and then the shortest length is going to be 15 inches. So just a quick recap of all the adjustments that we made, making sure that all our adjusted areas are marked with a pencil marking. And this is just to ensure that our adjustments are accurate on paper. At this point, her lovely daughter wanted to help so I just gave her the end of that measuring tape. We lined it up to the top of our veil and I just allowed the tape to fall effortlessly along the length of the veil. And this is when we actually got 97 inches, but we just rounded it off to 100. And we knew that this veil was gonna be something to talk about. She was happy and so was I. And just like that, that brings us to the end of our twirl fitting. I am just taking out the pins from the back of our dress only. Everything else can see. And of course, her lovely daughter is assisting her on shoes. Exactly how we asked Giselle to get into this dress, we are asking her to come out of the dress. So we're just going to let her hold the dress over her bust area. I am going to place her bra and ask her to put it on while the dress is still on and i'm doing this just because the camera is rolling and i'm just assisting her with buckling the bra at the back once that is secure and she's comfortable i'm gonna take the dress off we're just gonna ask her to shimmy out And that is that. Guys, I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for part two of this video. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.